<clears throat> Hello? Yes, is this the department of lost footage and magic time traveling? Yes. I would like to report some found footage that I found. Yes, I know that's how found footage works. You see, several years ago I did a video where I talked about predicted one-star books, and then immediately after posting that video I started filming another video of actually reading those one-star books, except I am a generally fairly slow reader, and so it actually it took me a long time to film it, so I filmed a, a clip here and there over the course of a couple months, but I never really finished it, and now uh, the footage is kind of sitting on my computer. I would like to use it in a video, please, if you could use your time-traveling magic to do that. Yes. Yes. Yes, that'll be fine. Thank you. Yes, I can hold for a time warp. Thank you. Hi, hello. So I posted a video called Predicting One Star Reads, and as the title of this video implies, I'm going to be reading those books that I mentioned. Literally, the book club meeting, after I filmed that one star video, they voted in this. Actually, no, they didn't even vote in 1984. What happened is that someone shouted it out and then everyone unanimously agreed to do this, so we didn't actually even do the voting process. We just... Everyone agreed to do this. Oh, it is longer. Like, I was scared of 300 pages. Not super long, but still longer than either of the past classic dystopians that I actually enjoyed. It's fine. We read Howl's Moving Castle before this, which I really liked. It's fine. It's fine. So I've got all of the books in a stack, and I'm going to try over probably the next couple months reading all of them and vlogging reading them, of course. A sort of New Year's resolution that I have for this year is to embrace being a mood reader, and one of the things involved in that is being more open to DNFing books. So what I've been doing is I that every time I reach the 50th page of a book, I'm asking myself, is this okay? Is this good? And then DNFing it if I'm not loving it or in, and I don't have any reason I really gotta read it. Like, really, really? So I think that rule is still going to imply. I'm going to give all of these at least their first 50 pages because, in my opinion, a, a good book will have you hooked by then. Technically, a really great book should have you hooked by, like, page one. I don't have much patience for books that are hard to get into. It's just, it's, nah. So, first of all, I read Guts, and I really liked it. This was a five-star book, so this is a really good start to the whole challenge thing. It was actually a lot more like Smile than Sisters in the sense that I understood what the point was and I feel like I got something out of it. And it's a memoir so it's not like a fiction novel but the story flow was a lot better in this one and I understood why it began where it began and why it ended where it ended. Darkstalker as well. I haven't finished it. I am about this far into it. I have my bookmark right here because I haven't annotated these chapters yet. But I am really loving it so far. It took a little bit to get into, but definitely by the time I got to page 50, I'm really into it now. The writing is actually really good, which surprises me because if you remember in my last video, I said the writing style in the first Wings of Fire books was one of the reasons that I didn't like it, but I think the writing's really nice in this one. And I'm really invested in the story and knowing what goes on because all the characters are very interesting. And I think it's really good. So far, this is like five stars. The main thing I'm worried about this one is the ending since it's technically in a series, but it's like a standalone 
side book to the series, I don't know, but it's definitely going to affect my view of this book if it has a sad or bad ending. So I'm hoping that it ends somewhat happily. So I reread The Thing About Luck by Cynthia Caduita. My main thing that made me put it as a one star was that I was afraid it was going to have propaganda in it, but it didn't. It didn't have any propaganda. I'm actually giving this one five stars because I didn't realize this book actually influenced me quite a bit. I marked at least five passages that are still things that I think about life. They aren't really big things, but like little things that I still have after all the years of reading it and didn't even realize that I'd gotten them from this book until I'd reread it. So it was very interesting. I recommend rereading some old favorites if you can because that was really cool. I also started on 1984. I'm audiobooking it. It's... The story's not bad, it reminds me a lot of Fahrenheit 451, which I wasn't expecting. It's given- it has the same vibe. The story hasn't had anything too awful in it. Mainly it's just me going, I think this is supposed to be scary, but it's not really scary to me because like this is already just life. And I understand why people say it's timely now. Usually whenever I see someone say that 1984 is timely, I feel like they're just saying that because that's the thing to say about it. But I, I get why it has that reputation now. Because it is very timely, I guess, if I'm using that correctly. My main problem with it is how long and slow it is. I'm only on like page 60 and I feel like I've been listening to the audiobook for hours and hours and hours and like every time I look down at the audiobook after thinking that I've listened to it for like an hour it's I it, like it ha I haven't made a dent it like, I haven't made dents. I'm really not far in it at all. I'm very thankful for coronavirus because book club was supposed to be this week, but we are pushing it back of all a month because no one wants to get together because of the coronavirus, so I'm kind of happy I get a whole nother month with this. I should have started it sooner, but I didn't want to. <laughs> or I didn't have time. No, what happened is that I'm listening to the audiobook of Darkstark. Darkstalker. And I wanted to finish that, but let's actually talk about Darkstalker. I'm a little scared to continue. I'm like at the halfway point because it's good. I see a lot of my friend in it. I kind of want to read a lot more favorite books from friends because I feel like you learn a lot about someone that way. But also I feel like I'm at the midpoint now. It just got into part two and I feel like everything's going to get really dark from this point on. So I'm kind of scared to continue, but I, I need to after I finish. 1984. So I started PAX last night. I do not love it so far as I predicted. It's very much a trying to make you sad book and I feel like the whole thing's gonna be like that. I think it does it well. It's very beautifully written. I really like the writing style, especially that first chapter. So I'm gonna keep reading it. We will see how it goes. So I had a thought about PAX, and I was kind of scared about that, so I flipped forward and I read the last few pages, and what I was afraid was gonna happen isn't actually gonna happen, so that's nice. I now have renewed hope for it, and I think I will really like it now, if I can just read it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that was that video. I never really finished talking about some of the books, and I've actually read a couple more that were in the original video of books that I predicted I would have one star reviews of. So let me just uh, finish telling you about those. So I did not actually ever finish reading PAX. I did decide to DNF it a few chapters in. I just decided I, I didn't feel like investing time and energy into reading a sad book about sad. Even despite knowing that the thing I was worried about wasn't going to happen, I still don't really want to read it. Uh, I am going to have trouble ever getting rid of it though because it has such a cute cover. I love boxes on covers. I love it. I also finished reading Wings of Fire. I did enjoy it and I even annotated it some. You can see I have the little flippies, the little markers. And 1984, I did finish it. Oh, well, that book club could have been a good book club, but it was a teenager book club and just 
everyone's too insecure to talk about serious issues or have like a genuine deep discussion when you're teenagers. So that was so it was a it was a it, it was a pretty okay book club. I did end up giving this five stars. I also gave Wings of Fire five stars, in case you were wondering. But I gave this five stars not so much because I enjoyed reading it, because I didn't really enjoy reading it, but I felt like it deserved five stars, because I think it's an important book that everyone should read at least once. But. I will not be reading it twice. And then there were a couple of books that I read that I didn't talk about in the video at all that I talked about in the original video. I audiobooked Anne of Avonlea. This was also turned out to be a five-star book. I loved this a lot more than I loved the first one. I don't know if these books just work better for me as audiobooks, but it also helped that like it wasn't boring like the last hundred pages of the first Anne like I thought it was going to be. It was actually a very cool and well thought out philosophizing about romance kind of thing and I really I really enjoyed that and it was fun and there was a lot more hijinks and stuff that were really very entertaining. I liked it. It was a five stars. I'm definitely going to continue the Anne series. And then the last book that I actually genuinely gave a shot to was The Night Circus. I had to wipe dust off the cover. I read a couple chapters of this and I'm just like, no. It had a really dark tone. It used the F word. I just, I'm not. This is on, presently on this stack of books which is like my stack of get rid of book that is very wobbly. I never really know how exactly to get rid of my get rid of books, so they usually end up staying in a pile. I need to get rid of some of these, but it is in my I'm getting rid of this stack. So this was a pretty interesting experiment. There's still a few books that were on that list that I didn't try, like I didn't try War and Peace. I still have a strong aversion to trying the Hunger Games. I don't think I really ever will actually try the Hunger Games. I feel like I should, but I just really don't want to. I have such a strong want to not have what's in that book in my head that I don't know if I will ever read it, even though I have a hard time getting rid of it either because they have such pretty covers. They are right here, in case you're wondering what I am doing. But this was an interesting experiment because most of these books that were on the original list ended up being five-star books. All the books on this list either ended up being five-star books or they ended up being DNFs. There was no in-between. I DNF Pax and I DNF'd The Night Circus and then all the other books I tried got five stars. The only one that was kind of a middle ground was 1984 because like I said I gave it five stars because I thought it deserved five stars, not really because I enjoyed it. But still, that's a, it's a, it is a, actually a pretty interesting outcome. I don't think I'll ever do a book experiment like this again because the process of filming this was kind of a hot mess and I don't, I, uh, like I kind of said in the other two videos, I kind of just don't like the concept of forcing myself to read something I don't want to read, but I don't know. I might. I might. 